Hello everybody, my name is Patricia Munoz and I use Photoshop a lot to do what I do every day. And uh, I'm approached by a lot of people who ask me, how do you do this in Photoshop? How do you do that in Photoshop? So I've decided to start making a bunch of video tutorials and show you how I do things. Uh, there are many different ways to do it. This is just how I do stuff and um, if it helps you, great. So let's get started. Um, in this video tutorial, I'm going to show you using this photo uh, of Kasia Baderka, a friend of mine and colleague from work. Um, I'm going to show you how to remove a subject from a white background. Here we have a photograph of a subject wearing a white undershirt uh, on a white background and she has a lot of hair, uh, fine hair detail that I want to try and preserve as much as possible but I want to remove the white background. So how do I do that as effectively as possible? Well, there is an awesome tool that I use called um, Kill White, which is a free filter that you can get from uh, the web at y-a-e-l-m-a-r-i-t-z dot com or you can type kill, kill white um, on Google and it'll be the first thing that pops up. It's a free filter and what it does is it removes anything white from an image. Um, it is a powerful tool and unfortunately it's a little too powerful and it will remove anything white including her teeth and eyes and white t-shirt. So we have to uh, use it uh, in junction with a couple of other techniques. So let's get started. Here we have the layer of the image. It's a background layer. I need to make that an editable layer. So I'm going to double click on it and click OK. Now it says layer 0. I'm going to duplicate this a bunch of times. And I'm going to make a uh, reference layer to help me see how well we're doing. And I'll fill it and I'll make it a color. What color? Green's good, sure. And I'll make another layer and I'll make it another color. I'll make it black. There we go. So basically, I'll turn everything off except the layers I just made. I made a green solid layer and a black solid layer. And I've got a bunch of the same photo of Cassia, so I'll start with this one. I'm going to show you what will happen if I apply the filter to an image just as is. So, kill white, so I apply. What you see is it's removed all the white, but it also removed any whites, any kind of white from anywhere else in the picture. So the whites of her eyes are removed, her teeth are removed, her uh, t-shirt is now transparent. Um, so she's like a ghost. If I showed you uh, one of these reference layers, like the black, you can see all the black shining through the areas that have been removed by this uh, plugin. So it is a pretty effective plugin at uh, doing what it does, and, but a little too effective. We don't want to lose all this information. So how do we bring back uh, some of her face info? Well, it's pretty easy we use a tool. I'm going to leave this up so we can use as a reference. Well, we're going to use a tool called the history or, uh, the history tool. History brush or whatever. Is it? History brush tool. And it's here or Y in the dialog box. And here I'm going to make my hardness instead of very hard, I'll maybe make it like 70% so it has some feathering on the edges. And I'm going to zoom out a bit and I'm going to start painting carefully on the inside of the photograph. What you're seeing is that I'm bringing back, or I'm undoing what I just did, except I'm isolating it to just the areas that I'm painting back. So basically, the Kill White filter uh, removed anything white, and what I'm doing now is bringing it all back. But I'm being careful not to go too far on the edges, maybe 70 is a little too much, 80. I don't want to go too far to the edges because I don't want to bring in any of the whites from the edges back. Just want the white on her face back and her hair and stuff like that. Cool. Good enough for now. Let's bring back some of the highlights here. So, here we go. Bring it back some white, but I think these are highlights. Um, yeah, for the most part, those are like highlights from the lights, like like the highlights that you see here, the side here from the lights. There we go. 
I think uh, there are some white areas there, but it's it's pretty good. What I'm trying to keep is most of this hair detail here, and you can see it's kept just the the brown, but it took out all luminance information, which is awesome. So this is the part I just painted back. Zero. There we go. So you can see her hair is her face is nice and bright, but her body still has a lot of uh, a lot of stuff that's transparent. So I'm gonna go ahead and select it. But I'm not going to go too far on the edges. I'm going to show you how to make that more refined in a second. There. Alright, so that's good enough for now, playing it safe. So, in order to get the best results around the edges of our body, then what we're going to do is go back to like one of these other pictures that we haven't adjusted, and we're going to go and desaturate it, and use the Levels tool to make her as dark as possible. There we go, something nice and dark. Bring that as sure as dark as possible. Just make sure it looks okay. That's pretty good. Too much artifacting. Alright, okay. So I'm back. You can see she's mostly dark. I'm going to use the brush tool. Uh, with a black brush, and I'm going to paint in any of these highlighted areas that are still here. It's an earring. I think that's a t-shirt. Zoom in and fill out these areas that didn't get quite black. There we go. There we go. There we go. Zero. I think that's pretty good. All right, now I'm going to go and, um, actually no, I'm going to apply the kill white filter on this image here. So what that's going to do is it's going to remove any of this white but keep the black. So there we go, now it's just a, like a stencil of uh, Kasha. And I'm going to use this as a guide, so I'm going to uh, control click on this thumbnail and you'll see these marching ants that outlined her body. And I'm going to go ahead and select the picture of Kasha that we're working on. This is the picture where we use the history brush tool to bring back most of the effect. But you can see there are areas here on the edges that I haven't uh, brought back yet because I, I don't want to accidentally go over the outlined area. So before I do that, I think what I'm going to do is, well, no, no, you know what, that's good enough for now. So what I'm going to do is go back to the art brush and I'm going to go ahead and paint all around the edges to bring back this part there. No, I think I probably bought back a little too much history. They ordered it back. Yeah, that's good enough. See the hair there? I want to try and keep that. The reason it looks black is because I have the mask up right now. Let me disable that. There we go. I want to keep that transparent. But I do want this stuff, so I'm going to go and fill this area in. There we go. Her arm. There. There. There we go. Zero. Let's deselect everything and we'll bring in like a color. There's how she looks like with uh, green or pink. You can see it works really well. You don't see a whole lot of white there. Same thing with the black. Pretty good. Inverts. Pretty good with the white. Pretty good with the black. A lot of the hair information is retained, but we lost any of the luminance gray shading. It's just brown, uh, which is uh, much better. Here again, like I said, I think these things are highlights. You can go ahead and tweak these by using the burn tool uh, properly. Um, Highlights. Oh, wrong one. Highlights. So I'm using the burn tool to bring these things a little down, darker, less intensity on the highlights. Yes. There, so it's not so noticeable. If anything, we might be able to bring these things and make it a little bit more brown. But these are little tweaks you can do as you go along. But for the most part, I just want to show you how to do the extraction as best as you can. 
and now you can see there is a little bit of fraying here and it's a little bit of stair stepping so if you want to go ahead and smooth that out all sorts of different ways but a nice fast way is probably going to be the blur tool make it like something like 80 percent or so just go ahead and do that works like a charm see how it smooths out the edges and since it's just a couple of pixels in the edge that are blurred it's good enough there. zero so now you can sort of smoothen out areas here and there and get a really nice key out of it and then uh, here we got a couple more I can do you can see the highlights are pretty strong just go ahead and use the blur tool with the highlights and darken up these areas make it look a little bit more what you're looking for there we go too much there so it's just a matter of tweaking and tweaking but the hard work is done we've preserved the hair detail and now all we're doing is uh, fine-tuning. So that is it actually. I think the uh, last thing I'm going to do is maybe I'll blur gently the hair around the edges there just to smoothen out and ensure that we have no sharp stair-stepping going on. Okay, so here we go. Black looks good with black, looks good with white and looks good as a transparent image altogether and we've retained all of her t-shirt information, her eyes and everything else and you've got a really good key on her hair. All the little pixels in between have been removed. That's how I do it and I did it in less than 10 minutes with instructions so it is a very fast tool, this filter by Mike and Yale called Kill White and I highly recommend it. It saved me a lot of time especially with uh, scenarios like this. So I uh, hope you found this helpful. Uh, again, there are many ways to perform an extraction uh, in Photoshop, so keep learning and find the way that works best for you, and that this is how I do it. Um, I'll be uh, sharing my video tutorials on 70pro.com. Um, are you a digital ph photographer or a filmmaker? Uh, if so, then uh, check it out. I've got a lot of camera specs, tutorials, links to photos and videos produced by you guys and f uh, various profiles of HD DSLR filmmakers and a lot of interesting things on that site. And I'm including these video tutorials as well. So um, hopefully you find the site useful and helpful and I hope you found this tutorial helpful. And uh, until the next one, have a good day.